There you can see the step charge for my Myers replication of his patent. The uh, oscilloscope is connected to one, a current sense on the side of the FET drive on the sink side. And of course, the other pulse is being seen at the transformer primary side. What you're seeing right there is the total supply current to the Myers circuit. That represents the voltage that you're seeing is a representation of the current. I'm using a 1 tenth ohm resistor. So that 74, 75, 76 <coughs> millivolts that you're seeing, if you divide that by 0.1, you are seeing 3 quarters of an amp. That is my dog in the background commenting who happens to be the producer. And the director is also in here giving the other one grief. Out now, now, come on, go. However, and that's the other producer talking to the other dog. I'm going to show you now is the waveforms that I'm using. Uh, it's a self turn off screen, it saves itself. Oh, bear with me a moment while I turn it on. I had to tap the producer on the shoulder to get out of the picture. I'm using 8.75 kilohertz. The coil that I wound is a bifolar coil that uses the 24 gauge wire that was recommended in the patent. The patent number will be seen on the YouTube description area just below the picture. The percentage of time on, however, for the pulse train has been reduced to 30%. The reason is, is because there are some heating issues that are going on in the transformer. I believe that is in the winding itself. Um, is leakage inductance and some other issues. However, that will be addressed shortly. Now, let's go over and take a look at the cell itself right now. That's producing gas along with the actual current that is being drawn by the cell. I'm going to flip over here real quick. Yeah. That right there Hold on a second, let me uh, pull out a little bit. In the picture there, you can see the DVM. What it is registering is 0 0.0109 volts. If you divide that by the sense resistor that's in line with the leads going to the cell, it is drawing roughly 100 milliamps. Now, let me pan over a little bit more and zoom in, and you can see what's going on with the cell itself. Let me get it, get it a little bit better, get that out of the, the way. I have a fluorescent light in the background. Um, let's see what happens if I turn that on. I don't want to drop this either. The idea was to give you a good contrast so you can see how much gas is being produced. However, the light swamps out the effect. So, let me turn that off. But you can see, as I zoom in, the gas production. Um, I have the gauge sitting on top, but I'm not really messing with it too much at this moment in time. Um, there are multiple points of Stop it. Bad. The producer and the director are having a fight in the background right now. So anyway, that's what I wanted to show you. That's what I've been kind of up to. Um Pretty much uh, the 
the circuitry is says it's pretty simple. Let me show it to you. What's on the bench is basically the FET drive. It uh, it does not get hot. Um, the reason I keep a fan in there, it's always best to keep your semiconductors as cool as possible, because if for some reason you start a thermal runaway issue with your FETs, they will self-destruct. Um, and there's quite a bit of physics behind that and some technology and science I'm not certain anybody wants to really hear about. If you want to, you can email me and let me know and I'll talk to you about it. Over there is the, I should say, that's the coil itself right there. That's a bifolar 24 gauge wire wound on that core, or I should say on that bobbin. There is no core with this. Um, if I add a core to it, it changes its inductance quite dramatically, and I really didn't want that. Um, I needed something that was uh, going to work at a reasonable audio frequency range. Otherwise, I'd be working at sub-audio, which I really didn't want to. Over here is a transformer and uh, the adjustable coils and such that aren't being used in the background. Anyway, that's pretty much it right now. Um, the source voltage is 15 volts. I'm working on the premise that your alternator is going to be running probably high to charge the battery, so it's going to be 15 to 16 volts. I can run it a lot higher, but there's no sense in that. Um, it's more or less of an experiment right now. Um, I believe in using good test equipment to get good results. Um, I see a lot of people on YouTube using single digit, you know, single decimal point meters and things like that, and you can't get good resolution or accuracy that you really need for doing your actual research. That's something I want to really address right now. Um, the, the other thing I want to get, talk to people about is there's people on YouTube right now that are talking about inductors and, and capacitors that don't know jack. Do yourself a favor. Go get the American Radio Relay League handbook. It teaches you about capacitance. It teaches you about reactants. It teaches you about inductors. It teaches you how to wind your own inductors. It teaches you good technique. Don't go by somebody telling you this is the way to do it. Because nine times out of ten, they got it wrong. I'm not going to tell you this is how you should wind your coils. This is how you should measure them. This is how you should do this and how to do that. I get my information from real good sources. My background is in science. My background is in engineering. My education is in science and engineering. So I am researching what Stan has been doing or had been doing up until the time of his death. Um, I have quite a bit to say about it. Uh, some good, some not so good. At any rate, this is Mike signing off.